or dear students or today we'll see what do we mean by rc integrated circuit which comes under the topic of wave shaping networks in analog electronic circuits so we will see what is an rc integrator so here our topic will be rc integrator now our basic definition of rc integrator says that it is a circuit which performs mathematical integration if you see the basic or definition the rc integrator is a rc network that is a resistance and a capacitance in series that produces an output signal which corresponds to the mathematical process of integration so because this circuit is providing mathematical integration process that is why it is called as integrator circuit and it is made up of only resistance and capacitance that is rc so it is called as rc integrator this rc integrator can also act as a simple low pass filter with a cut off frequency which depends on the r into c time constant r into c time constant which is represented as tau of the series network and whose output is reduced above this cut off point means all the signals above the cut off frequency will be rejected or will be attenuated and all the signals below the cut off frequency will be passed thus when fed with a pure sine wave an rc integrator can also act as passive low pass filter but now here first we will concentrate on what is rc integrator so if you see this circuit here you are having a resistance first at the input side and then you are having a capacitor across which is in series with r resistance but your output voltage is taken across the capacitor okay so here you can see the input is applied so here you can see that the input voltage is applied voltage is applied here which is called as v in that v in will produce a current i now this i is going to flow through the resistance and it is going to pass through the capacitance and in the process of time which depends upon the input whenever the input is going high the capacitor will get charged to a value depending upon the input time period okay so the a capacitor will charge to a voltage across it which can be called as vc okay and that vc will be taken as your output voltage here so it is charging and discharging of capacitance that is it has to charge and discharge okay now this charge and discharge of the capacitance depends upon the input voltage now say for example if you are giving a input as a square wave this is a square wave okay now depending upon the on time period depending upon the on time period say if the on time period is large on time period is large then the charging of capacitor will reach the maximum that is the input voltage the complete input voltage will be across the capacitor okay and it will remain till there and after that it will discharge okay but if the time period is taken very less okay so the on time period is less then the capacitor will not go up till the final voltage the amplitude or the voltage across the capacitor will decrease and it will exponentially charge and then when the input is low pulse it is going to discharge okay now this action this action of charging and discharging charging and discharging if you adjust the input time period and if you adjust the rc time constant then for a square wave input you can get a triangular wave output okay so here now we will see how does the integration process takes place now here you see a circuit and in this circuit the input voltage 
is are given as V in. Okay, so V in is your input voltage. V in is equal to input voltage. Voltage. Okay, and I is equal to the current. Current. Then V out is equal to output voltage. Output voltage which is equal to VC. Okay, and then you are having a resistor R and capacitor C. Okay, so across this R resistor R, you will have a voltage developed which will be called as VR. So here VR will be the voltage across a resistor R. VR is equal to voltage across resistor R. Okay. Now here, because for integration, we have to compromise between the time period of the input wave and the RC product, that is the RC time constant. Now here, RC time constant will be much, much larger than the time period of the input wave. Okay. So here, we see that a capacitor C, whatever reactance of a capacitor, it will be much, much less than the resistance R. It will be much, much less than the resistance R. So in this case, if the uh, reactance of a capacitance is very much less than the resistance R, then whatever input voltage we are going to apply, that will be equal to, so input voltage, whatever we apply, which is equal to voltage across the resistor okay because the reactance of capacitor is much much less than the resistor r now v in is equal to vr and then similarly you can write that current i can be given as v in upon r okay which is nothing but v r upon r okay now we know that we know that in the capacitor theory a capacitor theory we know that the charge q is equal to capacitance into the voltage applied okay so here we also know that i is equal to d q by dt for a capacitor okay so it is a rate of change of charge with respect to time or this same expression you can write as q is equal to integration of i dt q is equal to integration of i dt okay now the output voltage v out is given as Q upon C, that is the voltage across the capacitor is given as Q upon C because we know that Q is equal to CV. Now this can be written as integration of I with respect to T upon C. Okay. Now this can be written as because I is equal to V in upon R. I is equal to V in upon R. We can write this as integration of V in upon R with respect to T upon C. And here we can write this as R is a constant. So we can take this as 1 upon RC integration of V in DT. So V out will be equal to integration of, so V out will be equal to 1 upon RC into integration of V in DT. So here we see that V out is proportional to the integration of V in. Okay. So that is how you can say the circuit is acting as an integrator. Okay. For a passive RC integrator circuit, the input is connected to a resistance while the output voltage is taken across the capacitor. That is what we have seen in the circuit. The a capacitor charges up when the input is high and discharges when the input is low. 
that is what we have seen that whenever the input is high so whenever the input goes like this high the capacitor is going to charge exponentially and whenever it is going to go low it is going to discharge okay so that is how you say the capacitor charges up when the input is high and discharges when the input is low thus the rate of charging and discharging depends upon the rc time constant so the value of r and the value of c if you take the product the value of r into value of c if you take the product it will be equal to the rc time constant which can be represented as tau for the circuit to function correctly this is one of the uh, requirement for the circuit to function correctly as an integrator the value of the rc time constant has to be large as compared to the input periodic time that is rc product should be much much larger than the time period of the input square wave and it should be usually 10 times greater okay then a capacitor voltage in an rc integrator the output a capacitor voltage okay the capacitor charges during the time that the pulse is high at the input if the pulse is at its high level long enough the capacitor will fully charge to the voltage amplitude of the pulse the capacitor discharges during the time that the pulse is low for an rc integrator the input signal is applied to the resistance with the output taken across the capacitor this is what we are going to uh, conclude here then v out is will be equal to the voltage across the capacitor vc as the uh, capacitor is frequency dependent element the amount of charge that is established across the plates is equal to the time domain integral of the current that it takes a certain amount of time for the capacitor to fully charge as the a capacitor cannot charge instantaneously it can only charge exponentially so here if you see as an example if you take r as 100 kilo ohms and c as 1 microfarad okay so if you take the product r into c it will be 100 kilo ohms into 1 microfarad as shown here below so here you can see rc is equal to 100 kilo ohm into 1 microfarad so it is 100 millisecond okay so the time period is 100 millisecond okay so the time constant here rc will be the 100 millisecond now here if you give an input of a high time of 200 millisecond then what happens if you give an input of 100 millisecond then what happens at the output that we can see so here you can see if the input is high for 200 milliseconds then the a capacitor will get charged to the 86.4 percent of the input value okay so here you can see that it is getting charged to 86.4 percent of the input value so here you can see it is getting charged because it is having a lot of time because this is increased to 200 millisecond and it is approximately upon 86.4 percent of the input and then you are going to discharge okay this is when the time period or the on time has become larger okay now if the on time becomes smaller of 100 milliseconds then you can see charging and discharging of a capacitor a little faster no doubt the peak voltage reached might be little less but it will charge and discharge it will charge and discharge okay now if you adjust the time period of the input the time period of the input and the rc time constant that is the charging time then you can see that for a square wave input you can get a triangular wave output okay so this you can adjust as a triangular wave output okay so this is how an integrator for a square wave input can produce a triangular wave at the output now here you can see uh, we have shown three uh, cases for the output uh, now the input is a signal square wave now if the input frequency is very low okay input fre frequency is very low then the output will look like this as shown here the output will look like this when the input frequency is very low when the input is at medium frequencies then the output will look like this where you are showing charging and discharging of capacitor 
when the input frequency at high frequency, then you can get a triangular wave at the output. Okay, so this is how you can adjust the RC time constant and the input time period and get a triangular wave of a little lesser amplitude, but you will get a triangular wave at the output. Now here we have shown a RC circuit as an integrator. Now the same RC circuit can also act as a low pass filter. That's we have told you earlier, low pass filter low pass filter okay now when you apply a v in now see this v in whatever you are going to apply is a sine wave is a sine wave which will vary from low frequency to high frequency okay now whenever the frequency is low whenever the frequency is low the a capacitance whatever reactance it offers is a given as xc is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc okay now if the frequency is low okay the reactance is high the reactance is high and when the frequency is high the reactance is low that means when the input frequency is low the reactance is high so it will not pass here it will go ahead but when the input frequency is high it can pass through this capacitor and go to the ground so depending upon this r and c values there will be a frequency of cutoff that means if you take a graph of or frequency versus gain okay you will get a cutoff frequency cutoff frequency till where the gain is high and after the cutoff frequency the gain becomes low okay so th this will be called as pass band and this will be called as stop band and you're passing all the frequencies below the cutoff frequencies from zero to FC. And that is why it is called as a low pass filter. So a RC integrator is also a low pass filter circuit. So if you want to explain it as an integrator circuit, you can explain it as an integrator combination. Or if you want to explain it as a low pass filter, the same circuit can be used as a low pass filter also. Okay. Thank you students.